This lesson is on intermolecular forces. You'll find this in your textbook in chapter 6, section 5, pages 203 to 207. Make sure you're taking notes as you watch this, and remember that you can rewind and pause at any time. A couple things to remind you of. Uh, an ionic molecule is typically made of a cation and an anion. This is usually a metal and a nonmetal, the metal being the cation and the nonmetal being an anion. Electrons are essentially given from the metal to the nonmetal to make this bond. A covalent molecule is made of two nonmetals, typically, which is the sharing of electron pairs. So the electrons are essentially shared between the two atoms to form the bond. There are two types of covalent molecules, one of them being a polar covalent molecule. This is where you have unequal sharing of electrons. The more electronegative element has the electrons pulled more towards that atom such as in ammonia, NH3. In the picture you'll see in the ammonia molecule lines with a plus sign at one end and an arrow at, an, at the other. The arrow goes towards the more negative atom, the more electronegative atom, and the plus side go toward, goes towards the less electronegative atom, which eventually, essentially is more positive. You can also see this with the sigma negative and sigma positive. Uh, a nonpolar covalent molecule is when there's equal sharing of electrons, such as in carbon tetrachloride, CCl4. Another term to know would be what a dipole is. This is where opposite charges that are separated by a short distance are in a molecule, and those are shown by the lines with the arrow and the plus sign. So we've been talking about intramolecular forces. These are the forces within molecules such as covalent and ionic. In the picture here, you'll see water molecules, H2O, and the intramolecular forces are what hold the hydrogen and the oxygen together within the water molecule. An intermolecular force is the force between molecules, so from one water molecule to another. So you can see these are shown by the red lines. The oxygen is attracted to the hydrogen of another molecule. Intramolecular forces are stronger than intermolecular forces. So for instance, if you have enough energy to you if you have enough energy, you can break apart one molecule from another molecule, but you're not going to necessarily break apart the molecule itself. So intermolecular forces are broken in your uh, physical changes, and intramolecular forces are broken during your chemical changes. Van der Waals forces are just the collective name for the attractive forces between molecules. This is just another term for intermolecular forces. You'll hear both terms used. There are three types. We'll go through these in um, upcoming slides. You don't necessarily need to write them down right now. But they are London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole attractions, and hydrogen bonding. We'll start with London dispersion forces. So there is constant motion of electrons in noble gases and in nonpolar molecules, and this causes what we call a temporary dipole moment. So this creates a weak bond. Because the electrons are moving around, when there are more electrons in one location, that area will be more negative, and where they were, so where they don't exist, uh, will be more positive. So that's why we call it temporary, because they're constantly moving and that is changing. These exist in all atoms and molecules, so from one molecule to another always has London dispersion forces holding them together. Properties of these are that if you have larger, heavier atoms, you're going to have stronger forces existing between them because they have more mass. If you look at the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, fluorine and chlorine are your two lightest, so therefore they don't have a very strong attraction from one chlorine molecule to another chlorine molecule, so they're going to be gases, allows them to spread out more. Bromine is a little more massive, so there's more attraction, so they're gonna, those molecules are gonna be held closer together. That's why bromine is a liquid at room temperature. And iodine has the strongest attraction from molecule to molecule, so held together the closest, iodine is a solid. The next intermolecular force is a dipole-dipole attraction. This is the attraction of the positive end of one polar molecule to the negative end of another. In a polar molecule, you're going to have one end that is always 
more positive and the other end that is always more negative. So this is not temporary. So these are stronger than London dispersion forces. Such as if we have HBr molecules, um, the bromine would be the more negative side. It's going to be attracted to the hydrogen, the more positive side of another molecule. Properties of these dipole-dipole interactions are stronger between positive and negative charges, which makes these more likely to form solids. That doesn't mean they're all solids, they're just more likely to form them. The third and strongest intermolecular force, or van der Waals force, is called hydrogen bonding. And this is just a special type of dipole-dipole interaction. So you have a polar molecule where you have hydrogen bonded to one of these three atoms. Hydrogen bonded to oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. These are special because there's such a large difference in electronegativity. Hydrogen to each of these has a, um, has a very large difference if you subtracted their electronegativity values. So hydrogen would then gain a very large partial positive charge and the other element, oxygen, fluorine, or nitrogen, would gain a very large negative charge. Because you have such a big difference, you're gonna get a stronger attraction from the positive on one molecule to the negative on another. Just like a stronger magnet. Properties of these are that at a constant temperature, they require very large amounts of energy to break because there's such a strong force there. Water has hydrogen bonding, which uh, accounts for some of water's unique properties, hydrogen bonded to oxygen. So this is why water molecules are very hard to break apart, causing water to resist a temperature change. You may have noticed this if you have been by a lake in the spring or early summer and uh, it seems very warm out, but there's still ice on the lake and it's been warm for a while. It's going to take a long time to get enough energy to break those water molecules apart and change that solid water into a liquid. So putting them in order from weakest to strongest, we start out with weakest being London dispersion forces. Remember these are your nonpolar molecules just creating that temporary dipole. Next strongest will be your dipole dipole, so your polar molecules. And then the strongest would be the hydrogen bonding. So when you have a molecule with hydrogen bonded to either oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. The stronger the bond, the more energy that is required to break it, therefore the higher the boiling point. So molecules with hydrogen bonding would have higher boiling, boiling points than molecules with London dispersion forces. All right, we have two example questions. Uh, the first one, what is the predominant? So the main one, which they all have London uh, dispersion forces, so the predominant intermolecular force in each molecule. And my hint to you is to draw the molecules to help determine their polarity first. Um, so pause the video now, answer the question, and then I will go through it with you. Um, drawing them out, the first one, NCl3, you're going to have a pyramidal shape. So, and in this case, with the nitrogen having its unshared pair, you're going to have a polar molecule. The second one, the HF, you're going to have a linear shape, but with uh, two different atoms bonded here, you're going to have a polar molecule. Um, and the third one, CO2, you have a linear shape, but you have oxygen on either end of the carbon, so you're going to have a nonpolar molecule. Since the NCl3 is polar and you do not have hydrogen in here at all, this would be a dipole-dipole intermolecular force. The second one, you have a polar molecule, but hydrogen is bonded to fluorine, so you have hydrogen bonding. And the third one, with being a nonpolar molecule, you have a London dispersion force. Example question two, rank the following in order of increasing boiling points. Pause the video now to answer the question, and then I will go through it. Uh, when you draw these out, the first one is tetrahedral, which is going to be nonpolar since you have all hydrogens bonded to your carbon. Um, the second one also tetrahedral, but now with a chlorine attached, you have this molecule is now polar. And the third one um, also tetrahedral, but you have oxygen bonded to hydrogen, so you have a polar molecule, but you have hydrogen bonding. 
So your lowest boiling point would be the CH4 because it has London dispersion forces. The uh, second highest boiling point would be the C CH3 um, F. Sorry, there's a CL in the picture. Replace it with F um, in your mind. Um, so this would have dipole dipole because it's polar. And the highest boiling point would be the CH3OH because it has hydrogen bonding in it. 